in Iowa on Interstate 80, there is a, a great truck stop. Uh, it is the uh, exit 80. I don't know. It is the biggest truck stop in the world, so they say. And there's a free trucking museum here. That's pretty amazing. But they've got some interesting uh, things that you can notice. If you're following semis, if you've noticed semis haven't changed in a while, well, that's true. Uh, but there's also uh, some history here. When it comes to electric trucks, that's what we're going to look at. I'm Brian. Welcome to Future Aza. Special thanks to Joa for sponsoring this video. Joa offers a variety of high quality accessories for your Tesla, like sunshades, phone mounts, and floor mats. Every one of the Joa accessories I got when I first became a Tesla owner are still in my car in use to this very day. Whether it's for your Model Y or Cybertruck or anything in between, they got you covered. For a limited time, you can get 10% off your purchase from Joa with coupon code ASA10. And I'll get a small commission too, which helps out the channel, so thanks. All right, so let's walk back out here. In Iowa, on I-80, there is a huge truck stop, perhaps the largest truck stop in the world, and there is a free semi-truck museum. And they've got a whole bunch of stuff. There's some B-roll running now. It is amazing and fascinating and very, very interesting. But what is uh, new about trucks? What is old about trucks? What has changed and what is coming back around? That's what we're going to examine. So right here, we've got this 1951 Federal, Federal D65M. And it is pretty interesting to look at. You can see that it's got your, your frame rails, your double wheels, your uh, leaf suspension, leaf spring back there. And frankly, if you were to pop this cab off and uh, put a new cab on, it would probably look a whole lot like a new truck. And of course, under the hood, a lot has changed. But under the hood, a lot has changed. But uh, a lot hasn't. A lot of it is still the same. If we go even farther back, 1925, Kenworth KS3 ton. <laughs> Celebrating 100 years of trucking. Happy birthday. Uh, yeah, big heavy steel frame, leaf suspension, leaf strings there. No air in the tires. That's uh, it's gonna make for a bouncy ride. Pretty unpleasant. Kenworth, by the way, apparently the first truck to put, uh, put a sleeper cab in, according to one of the plaques I saw. But we've got something more interesting here. We've got a 1911 Walker Electric Model 43. What are we doing here? <laughs> and talk capable. You see, I get these comments all the time saying, electric trucks won't work and here's why. And then they proceed to tell me the dumbest theory I've ever heard. One theory is, well, until they carpet the world with high voltage mega chargers, it's not gonna work. We need giga chargers and we need them everywhere and we need them before we start selling trucks. That's not how that works. This has three and a half horsepower, 84 volt DC electric, load capacity, three tons. Pretty good. Top speed. Hold on to your clams. 15 miles per hour. That's uh, nine kilometers. Something like that. Yeah, nine-ish kilometers per hour. That's a little on the slow side. So let's take a look at it here. Look at this thing. It's a beauty. It's a beast. Uh, not sure how much I'd want to use this, but if the alternative is horsies, well, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Specializing in hotel, restaurant, club, and hospital. Do you need chargers everywhere? Well, I'm here to tell you the answer is, of course not. Why would you? If you're only delivering from the port to your warehouse, you only need chargers at the port and or your warehouse. Probably not both. One or the other might do it. A lot of trucks are already on the road. Thousands of electric trucks are already on the road. They have ranges of anywhere from 100 to maybe 2, 250. Maybe, you know, that's not, not so much. Oh, the kilometers, I did it backwards. About 23 kilometers per hour. Sorry about that. Ah, I did the math backwards. I'm very tired. I've been driving a little bit. Okay. So you can charge wherever you are. You don't need charging everywhere. 
There's a company in China that's doing battery swaps on their commercial big rigs. And there are people who say commercial battery swaps work for everything. No, they don't. And there are people who say battery swaps work for nothing. Also untrue. Because if you know your routes, which all commercial companies do, you know if it works for you. Also by making it a battery swap at the commercial level, you can off, the manufacturer can offload the risk and cost onto the customer. The customer can choose how many spare batteries to buy. If it's not enough, that was their poor planning, not the manufacturer's. And trucking doesn't have a Memorial Day weekend or a holiday weekend like that where all the trucks are out, whereas all the cars are out. So that makes it a little easier to manage in that regard. Another myth I love to hear is, until you can drive all the way to Davenport, Iowa, which is in a different state, 22 miles away. I am actually about 22 miles from Davenport, so that joke works on uh, one level, maybe two. You can, yeah, until they can do all that, it's not gonna work. It already works. Not for every application, but it doesn't need to work for every application. In the museum here, there are a lot of trucks going back off a real long time to a time when the trucks didn't make sense necessarily, when gas wasn't available on every street corner, when truck stops didn't exist because trucking kind of didn't exist. You look at something like this Timbercrest Farms truck, 47991 Dry Creek Road. And what you see is this was not super practical for the time, but it worked. Why did it work? Well, because the owner knew the application and matched the vehicle that was available to the application. And there's a lot of that here. A lot of vehicles that you think have nowhere near enough horsepower. Some of them 20, 30, 60, maybe 100 horsepower. Big old uh, big rig cargo hauler, 175 horsepower. Well, that's not enough. No one will buy it. And then you've got, on top of that, the same kind of philosophy, which is uh, people won't buy the truck because people don't like electric or people don't like Tesla or whatever it is. In any case, it's uh, an emotional call. Businesses don't have emotions. Famously, they don't have emotions. It either works or it doesn't. It's either a financial benefit or it isn't. If it's not a financial benefit, some companies will still look into it to find out, to see where we're at with the technology. If you're running a thousand trucks, get one, get 10, just to see if it's ready, if it's time if it meets your application needs. And sometimes it does, and that's when you go full steam. Charge-in, head on all electrons, I guess. So you don't have to have everything right the first time. 150 miles, that's not enough. Volvo, Kenworth, Mercedes, BYD have been selling electric trucks with that kind of range, sometimes even less sometimes a bit more, but nobody's been selling at 500 miles of range, not yet. Tesla hopes to be the first to do that at large scale with the Tesla Semi. All of that is a long way of saying, we didn't have Semi footage last week, we will this week, you'll see. So, and I may have a chance to check out Giga Nevada myself, in person, from a tremendous distance. Ah, they'll get me in one of these days. They, <laughs> Well, there's no events going on. Okay. That's, uh, that. That. So yeah, a lot of cool stuff here. If you get through Iowa, and you should. I mean, why should you, but you should. Uh, all kinds of cool stuff. And if you think this room looks big, there's another room off to the side. It's uh, about half this big again, full of even older, even cooler stuff. So that's it. Uh, if you've got some persistent thud in the comments, let me know. I'd like to hear it. I'd like to see it. I'd like to debunk it. And everybody else, you know, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. And uh, I want to thank my patrons once again for making this trip and trips like it possible. I cannot do it without your support. It means the world to me. And uh, the event in Michigan was a masterpiece. It was so good. We're looking for a sponsor next year to help us pay for recording and or broadcasting of it. So hopefully we can make that happen. And uh, it's great. The lineup just keeps getting better. Uh, and my 
capacity as a moderator in putting the panels together and getting them all coordinated and scheduled. I'm very proud of that. It works out really well. So, uh, what did I miss? What did I misunderstand? Leave it. I beg of you, leave it. And everybody else, stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear when you clever robots, when you find a museum as cool as this. Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy, Brian. I'm just checking out the uh, FSD demo. Now this isn't the official one in Austin, but it's the exact same thing because I'm in a Tesla checking it out. And look, this guy right here, just sitting there. And I can ask him anything and he's not allowed to answer. Isn't that right? Amazing. So I'm being cynical, of course. I'm being cutesy because is it that different? Is what I'm doing that different? Is it crazy? Is it terrible? Oh, can you believe they didn't launch with the RoboTaxi? Someone on X pointed out, honestly, it's a bigger flex. These are factory direct cars. If Tesla wanted to deploy one more RoboTaxi, they wouldn't even have to do anything. It would roll out of the factory and go away. Get to work, you. Get to work. Uh, so thanks for sticking around after the credits uh, because, you know, sometimes there's good stuff here. Ah, so here I am. Back to my drive, hands off, and he and he won't talk to me, even if I, even if I call him a terrible name. Nothing, nothing. What a problem.